Uh, well, where to begin on this? Uh, probably an unusual start of a podcast for one of ours, certainly from one of our hosts, which is generally quite professional when we do this. But what the fuck was that? Uh, <laughs> Everton away at Tottenham, beaten 5 0, which doesn't quite tell the full story and how poor Everton were tonight. I think that's fair to say. Les Roberts, Mark Mosey, uh, and myself, Dave Downey, here to, um, well, try and get together a few words about this uh, disgrace that was down in the uh, in the England capital tonight. Um, I mean, I've seen I've seen several people, particularly with commentating on the game, the ones who were in the studio and Monday Night Football here for Sky, saying that Everton were decent for the first ten minutes. <laughs> um, I, I'm not even sure I could say that or, or, or get something in my mind that thinks anything was would describe the word decent, even in the first 10 minutes. It was an absolute disgrace. And, um, you know, people feeling confident about Everton going to Spurs. I think the one thing that I take from this weekend is that nobody in and around Everton um, on the, at, at the bottom three of the Premier League won anything. Um, so, you know, that, that is the only thing that I take from this because in terms of performance, it was an absolute disgrace. Moes, I'll start with you, mate. Um, you, you, you've been drinking. Uh, <laughs> really? so I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not too sure what's going to come out of your mouth here, mate. But, uh, <laughs> fire away, fire away. Um, I mean, all I can really take from the last week is that Frank Lampard essentially all, all but... It kind of went as far as to say that we're not going to get anything out of the next two games, so don't press the self-destruct button when we're on the way back up from Tottenham with absolutely nothing to show for it. Um, I think collectively as a fan base, we would have bitten your hand off for one point out of City and Spurs. Uh, yeah. and obviously we weren't even able to muster that. It's it's difficult now in the in the immediate aftermath to not think about how positively we were all thinking after Leeds, albeit knowing we were probably going to get beat by City and we were probably going to get beat by Tottenham. And I know it doesn't help now to say, well, what did you expect from those two games? But it, it takes it takes a more resolute man than me to to look at what we've seen in, in the last week to think, let's just settle down. These weren't the games that we're meant to save ourselves with. Um, and as, as much as that may well be true, and we all hope that that is the, the eventual saviour of Everton, is that we are able to get something against, you know, Wolves, Newcastle, Brentford, God forbid, Watford away, if we're able to actually turn up to one of these away games. But the, the, the contrast between the Everton that we see in these kind of, stoic backs to the walls games at, at Goodison Park where everyone's united and we're able to suddenly transform into this semi-relevant football team and the shower that we see tonight I mean th there are good sides in this league and they have quality and they have players like Phil Foden and Son and Kane and, and you know what th they are all capable of producing moments that will beat you but when you lay back and let them walk directly through the centre of your, your team that we saw countless times tonight. I mean, most Evertonians will have been able to pick a goal coming about 10 or 15 seconds before it actually happened. Yeah. Because we, we've all collectively seen those moments, haven't we, where a centre-half gets dragged way out of position, Spurs manage to regurgitate the ball, get it to a player like Son or Bergvine later on, drive at the remaining two or three defenders that we've got and simply choose which of their attacking players has the shot on target and ultimately scores. Um, and do you know what? I, something that was said on Sky Sports in the commentary tonight was that Everton's front six pre-game looked like it had some form of promise to it. You look at, at Van der Beek, De Corre, you know, having people like Richardson and Calvert-Lewin back together in that starting eleven. It looked like a side who were capable of potentially going on to cause problems. And I, I probably would agree a little bit, Dave, with what was said early on in that it, it looked like a semi-decent Everton mm. open in 10 minutes because that, that, quite frankly, is the standard when we go away from home. But having... having Joe, you know, the worrying thing for me is that I've all along, you know, all of the all of the cliches about why Everton will stay up, you know, three worst teams, etc., I always look at our squad and, and certain individual players and think, 
don't ask me how, but there is enough there. There, there is enough within this club, personnel-wise, to keep us up. Because if you look at failing teams in this league, quite honestly, it's usually teams who can't put the ball in the back of the net. And we've got players who are capable of doing that. But when, when you totally throw the towel in defensively, like, like we have done tonight, I'm sure we'll go on to talk about individuals within that defensive setup. But it, it took Jamie Carragher six seconds of, of tactical analysis at half time to say that is a championship defence. Every, yeah. every single part of it, the, the whole entire setup of it. Um, and what Frank Lampard is able to do with that now is quite simply going to have to be miraculous because we, we are all collectively sitting here thinking, how have we gotten to this stage in? the season in Mashiri's tenure in £500 million worth of effort and still putting out those four lads at the back. And if we're not able to sort that quickly, it's really not going to matter what level of calibre we've got going forward because we're just going to leave goals left, right and centre. Well, I mean, bringing you in now, Les, to to sort of go through what, what Mark said then, um, look, it, it comes down to these fixtures we have at Goodison ultimately because... I don't know anybody who expects us to get anything away from home. And I include Burnley, sadly, in that. And I include Watford, who we go to shortly as well. Um, some of the others aren't even worth showing up. Final day of the season, you might as well go on your holiday, regardless of where we are or what division we're in, when we go to uh, to Arsenal. Um, right, I'm going to ask you this question, and, and I know full well that there's not a real answer in this. Or if there is, mate, I, I'd happily give you my season ticket money and say, I'll, you know, go go down to Goodison and ask for the job. What goes on away from home? What is the difference away from home? Because uh, Lampard, that's a sixth game, isn't it? What is it? We've won three at home and mm. lost three away. Mm. Um, what is the difference there? Because I'm, I'm looking at a fella who has won everything in the game, everything that is to win in a game as a footballer. Um, the, the, the one thing that actually ironically excited me about him coming in more than anything else was the fact he'd be able to get into these lads, into these individuals and the professionals that are at the football club who I don't really like calling at the moment professionals, but that's sadly what they are. Um, he, I would think, be the person to say things and, and, and things that just become natural into these lads once he's got somebody around them who's done it. They've been there and done it. You know, I get that with Benitez, why it didn't happen because, you know, he's what we, you know, to be nice, he was a fossil as a manager. But Lampard, and I'm not talking about his managerial skills or the tactical stuff or anything like that, which we'll get on to anyway. But he's the way in which these players seem to change. Um, Alan's a person I've mentioned on numerous occasions thinking that at Goodison, he looks like a competent midfield, defensive midfield player who was able to win the ball and get his, his team into attack. Away from home, it, it doesn't even look like the same fella. Um, I, I, I have no idea what happens. Can you put your finger on what they think, feel, what concerns them about going away from Goodison Park? It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. The, the worry for me is just the fact that we can't put two consecutive performances together and that's what we need in the next two games. We've got Wolves in Newcastle and they need to put back-to-back performances together, which they've not been able to really do, I think, for the best... Well, maybe not all season, but certainly for the best part of this season. I don't know what it is away from home, but as you say, they, they just turn into completely different players. Now, the thing with the defence, it, it's like the first part of the season, Havel Lewin got injured early on, Richarlison was up for quite a few games as well. And it was like, well, when we get the attack back, we'll be all right. Yeah. Now, the attack's come back and it, it's not looking anywhere near as good as it should be. But the defence is goosed now because we are relying on Michael Keane, Mason Holgate, John Cho Kenny at left back and, and Seamus Coleman at right back. And that is that is not a good defence. And if you, if you can't keep the ball out the back of the net, I mean, you would like to think that that attack could score goals and maybe we just outscored the opposition. But we can't do that. I mean, we're never going to outscore Spurs at Tottenham. But I kind of thought, you know, Lampard's getting like quite a bit of stick for his um, his tactics tonight. But he basically put out the same team that did that well against City. And it's like, well, how can you do that well against City at home and 
concede five away at Spain. You know, and and unlucky to get beat at home to City. It just it just doesn't add up. I have absolutely no idea what goes on with this team. Um, but it all it, it basically all comes down to the defense, and you know that's that's what that's what your team is built on. That's what your results are built on. It's sort of when like you know, I always take it back to the nineties because it's very relevant this season actually because this is probably the worst we've been since ninety eight, and. You go back to 94, and that's a dead easy one because Joe Rawls sort out the defence and he got the players um, just battling for each other. And that's how we ended up staying up and winning the cup. 98 was slightly different. Um, we didn't have particularly good players in that team, but there was a bit of fight in there. You know, it, it's like when you're looking at you're looking at Michael Keane now and you're thinking Carl Tyler is a better defender than he was. I mean, uh, Yeri Mina is basically this this generation Slavin Bilic. It's just horrible, and I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know what we can do, but it is going to come down to home form because I can't see this team getting any points away from home because it, we've seen it all season. They can see the goal and they capitulate away from home. They, they did it at Villa, and um, Leon Bailey had like ten minutes of a yeah. good game all season. He got man of the match, and that's the only good ten minutes he's played all season, I think. And he's just three 0 um, I think there's been other things I can't think like that. there's been other occasions this season when we just we just couldn't really away from home and at, at home as well against Watford uh, which still as I say gives me PTSD but I, I don't know how Lampard sorts this out I, I, I don't know what he does because he set up tonight in pretty much the same way he set up at home against City and you think do you know what if you're unlucky to come out of a game against City home or away with a 1-0 defeat Surely you can take that to Tottenham away and do the yeah. same thing, and they just couldn't. And it, I, I honestly don't know where we go from here because you know Tottenham aren't a great side. The the, the, the form I got it up before the what where are they there? We got beat by Southampton, beat by Wolves, beat by Burnley, but in that they beat Man City, leathered Leeds, and leathered us tonight. <laughs> yeah, I just they're just they're, they're a very inconsistent team, as are we. But we're just horrifically bad away from home. I, I honestly don't know why what the manager can do in this thing. Because you think if he plays three, five at the back, it probably wouldn't help anyway. Mm. I, I I just think when when you've got that back four of Penny, Holgate, Keane, and Coleman, you're on a bit of a hide into nothing from the start. Yeah. And 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 that's the position we're in, unfortunately, because of injuries and whatever else, you know. Big, the, the hindsight thing is we should have signed a centre back in January, which we didn't. But yeah, everyone knew that we should have done, but we did sign two full backs in January, but we're not playing them. It's, mm. yeah, it, it, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know where we go from here. Joe, the, the frustration with that for me, Les, are two things. I think I, I personally think it was probably a little bit naive tonight to to go with the, the four at the back and, you know, you, a typical 4-3-3 that I think most of us have been crying out to see at Goodison Park consistently. Uh, we've had a glimpse of that work and in hindsight, I, I get it that you probably look at that game tonight and think, well, sticking Brantwaite in from the start and just being a little bit more back to the wall, which which ironically we ultimately managed to find. And I actually really enjoyed the last 20 minutes when Tottenham just signed off totally. Um, that was that was probably one of the better spells of our season. Um, but I, I think that the, the probably is there's a little bit of a, a a dent on Lampard for me tonight in terms of just knowing what Everton do at, at grounds like Tottenham and, and Arsenal. And you, you mentioned about Tottenham's kind of inconsistent form. If ever there was a, a, a team to provide that medicinal bounce on the back of a, a disappointing 1-0 defeat up at Middlesbrough, we we are it, aren't we? And, you know, yeah. we are the the ultimate bounce back to to any sport and team's disappointment, and we we all know how we are. I think in the in the absence of an out and out central defensive midfielder, you probably do have to afford your defence a little bit more cover. And I'm I'm not defending any one of those four lads tonight because, as you said, be it a fault of their own poor standards or just being about 10 years past the top of their game, as is the case with Seamus Coleman. None of them are good enough to be relevant at this football team. And Michael Keane is, quite frankly, the worst 
defender that I've ever seen play for this club and, and I've seen Mason Holgate. Um, to, to Probably touch, alongside him at the same time as well. Yeah. To touch on the, the, the full-back point, which, which you made, Les, which I think is, is totally relevant. And again, it was, it was semi-addressed through the game tonight in that what, what really pisses me off about Everton is that I, I accept that at times they will be terrible and, and more often than not that is the case. But if, if you're going to be really bad at this sport, you might as well learn something in, in the meantime. I, I'm not going to learn anything from seeing Seamus Coleman run himself into the ground anymore or from John Joe Kenny cutting inside on his right foot from a left-back position at 2 nil down early on in the first half, trying to create something for us. What what are we ever going to, to gain at, at that point? Do you know what? You might as well have hooked the pair of them at 2 or 3 nil down and put Patterson and Mikalenko on and just said, show me why you're going to be involved in this team for the next 11 games. And just... The, the consistent and and this this comes with chopping and changing your manager constantly, doesn't it? Is that someone has to come in and learn exactly the same pointless mistakes and pointless lessons that this team will consistently give back to managers. And I think collectively as Evertonians now, we've had the benefit of watching this pathetic cycle over and over again. And at the point where we actually take that that step and go out and sign Mikalenko and go out and spend money on a on a promising young right back, I, I get the alternative argument that you know you, you're throwing them into the pan and, and it's unfair on the lads and their development. I, I don't really care about their development right now. If, if they are marginally better than Coleman and Kenny, then they quite simply have to be trusted. Because if not now, I mean, you can talk about this not quite being the timing of the season for them. Well, in May, they're going to have to make a big choice between not being at this football club anymore or seasoning themselves in the championship. Um, and we're, we're not going to learn whether these lads are, are good enough in, in key moments of Premier League football unless we actually afford them that that element of responsibility. And yeah. it's just it's painful, Dave, isn't it, just watching the same thing over and over again? Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think... Jordan seasons, I think you have to sort of cut out the non needs must type of stuff. Mm. So, like you've just said there, you know, people who will talk about Brantway, they'll talk about Michelenko, obviously, different personal issues he's got right now. Um, you know, and, and also Patterson, and they'll say, Oh, you know, you, you need to blood them in just at various times. You give them half an hour here or there, hopefully, when we've you know, won a game. Like, for instance, against Leeds, you throw one of the lads on for the last half hour or something like that. Yeah. But I, I think that just has to be completely thrown on the back burner if, if you'd ever have the... If you're ever fortunate, fortunate enough to go back into doing that sort of thing because now we're at a stage where we need we need to stay in the Premier League. Um, and I think, you know, the, the, the it's times I've said this in the last few months... Uh, particularly since Benitez left, you know, things will have to be sacrificed that we don't want to see as a, as a football club, as, as fans. We don't want to see certain things happen there. Like you said there, you touched upon it, you know, back four, <laughs> you've got to throw five there, even yeah. six. You know, you've got, to, you've got to throw the five there and put two in front of them. You've got to do what is necessary to stop the opposition from scoring. Um and and that's what is so difficult, I think, for many fans, and, and include myself with that. What that first eleven I look at, and you know, and like the way they've mentioned it, the the front six and all that, that looks decent and stuff. That 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 feels like a luxury to me, as sad as it says, as sad as it sounds, to, to say, well, is is a front six there that can do harm to a, an opponent? He's just conceded five goals inside what fifty minutes. Of a game, fifty-five minutes of a game. Um, I I think some some of those uh, Spurs fans should be ashamed that they didn't score more than five goals when they're watching their team against something like that, mate. Boreham Wood would have gave them a better game than us. But the, 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 to take to take the sort of the sort of sad joke and aside, I'd throw those kids in straight away. Um, Patterson, Brantwaite, I'd throw their centre back. My, Michael Keane, if we can do it. Um, Shouldn't be anywhere near the the the, the first eleven um, for the rest of this season, at least. 
because look, I know I know we've had issues with the lad before. I know we've had he's had personal issues as well. They're all well documented and stuff, but um, that's certainly not going to do him, do him any help whatsoever, is it? The way in which he's playing, the way in which he's put into the side. So just take him out. Um, we, we need to look further apart from what we, we've been doing um, with the same players that have let us down every single week, uh, apart from the odd few. Um, you're talking about consistency, Les. I mean, these two home games, well, it might be different now, might not given the, uh, the the FA Cup game. <laughs> ironically, with our chance to get to Wembley uh, away from home, it'd be quite ironic if we that was the one that we won. Um, and then, and then you know, that's probably the less, well, it is less important than getting three points away from home right now. But Wolves is next. Our home Wolves are on a um, little bit of a down of themselves. They've lost the last three games. But I have no, I, I have no doubt that they're able to come to Goodison Park and beat us. There is absolutely no doubt when you look at the way in which this team has performed tonight. It, it's it's about it, it, it's a slight a small miracle if he gets that eleven that he's got there back into fighting for points at Goodison Park. I think, and I know we'll all do the support thing we do. We'll all do what we do every time we go there with our season tickets and all that stuff. But that was a proper. Stab in the heart tonight, um, yeah. for, for so many of those players. And I I haven't got a clue where he even looks at when he rocks up. Obviously, they'll have the day off tomorrow. When he rocks up to training on Wednesday, you know where does he even look at uh, in terms of selecting a team for how we play against Wolves? I I can't see I can't see how he does it with something that he's able to say to these lads. You need to pick yourselves up here because I think you know it's if it's keen. Say if it's, I think Holgate will play anyway because sometimes he looks like he doesn't give a shit, um, and 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 sometimes he, he looks like he really doesn't want to be anywhere, but he doesn't want to be any anywhere near uh, an Everton side. Um, where, where did you even start looking at that and how to how to address it? And the, the other big one as well that I did want to ask the pair here about is Calvert Lewin, um, which is he's been an issue. Um, Obviously, not as much in in terms of the spotlight as the defenders, but he hasn't looked anywhere near like giving any sort of interest to Everton Football Club in in the last couple of games. Um, I I'd use Calvert Lewin as a sub for the for the next few games. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd put Richarlison in that in that um, number nine position. Um, I think the next two games we do play four three three at home. I worked against City, as you both said, it it it's different at home whatever reason I mean there's no reason why a team should play like that different away from home than you do at home but we do so we think at home you, you can kind of safely go into the Newcastle and the Wolves game and say we play the 4-3-3 we kind of take the game to them and we, we play to our strengths because you know that, that it, it worked against City it worked against Leeds it looks a lot better at home than it does away so I think, I think we've got to go with that but I think, yeah, I think I'd use Calvert-Lewin. Whether it's injury, whether it's form, whatever, he's he's not doing it. So I'd use him as a, as a sub for that and put Richarlison um, in that nine position. You've also got then the chance to bring Damari Gray in. Was he injured again tonight? Or? Yeah, it seems so, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, he, he does make a big difference to this team. I think if you've got Damari Gray and Anthony Gordon out wide and then Richarlison up front, I think that probably does look like a more... Mobile from three at the minute. Yeah. Um, it's the defence that's the big issue, isn't it? Because, the, you know, they're going to be going into games now thinking that we're going to concede one, maybe two, maybe three. Who knows? Because there's no confidence in the defence. And when there's no confidence in your defence, it just cascades through the team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you play like like we did tonight. Now, um, I honestly don't know where we go other than, as you both said, might as well just throw the two young lads in at the full-back position because he can't really do any worse. Um, and I would throw Brantwaite in. Um, you know, he, he's not looked good against... Did he play against Southampton? He didn't look great against Bournemouth. He didn't play, play well against Southampton, I think. I can't remember. They're all blaring into one horrible mess. It was, um, it was also Newcastle away. He had to oh, come sorry, yeah, it was, it was well. Newcastle. Yeah, it was Newcastle away, sorry. Um, he looks shaken by it. And the thing is... Les, just sorry to interrupt. You can go back in a sec, but just on on Brantwaite, looked fantastic um, when I've seen him in an Everton shirt up until after that Chelsea game. He was where great he got Chelsea. That, like, he, he was brilliant. Was so he went down to that, didn't he? He, he looked brilliant that night. Yeah. But since then, 
he looks a shadow of his former self, and, and obviously you can't blame the lad when he's in these circumstances, and 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 able to sort of, you know, make a make a mockery. And literally, literally, if he played well, he'd be making a mockery of ninety percent of the, the players in and around them. But that I think that also is an indication as to how a lot of those lads feel uh, at that club, even with the the boost in inverted commas of of Lampard coming in and Paul Clement coming in. Um, you know, these lads will be sh- so shaken given how poor this season's been up until Lampard coming in. That's why I do have a sympathy with Lampard as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I've seen a few people, not ripping them apart, but saying he's equally as much as to blame as as everybody else there. And I'm not too sure I'm comfortable with that because nah. he's 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 taken over a squad that is on its ass, um, given the manager that previously ripped it to shreds. Um, you know, I don't think you can you can even throw a certain percentage of it, it being his fault. And perhaps other than a few little things that obviously develop in, into big things, but you know, uh, such as the selection in terms of tactics and he haven't forward the back, all that sort of thing. But then that's also when you look at Lampard thinking, well, this lad does have an inexperience in the Premier League dogfight, and 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 that's where I'm. I'm I am concerned for him uh, as much as everybody else. But, um, yeah, just going back to that, like I think it looks like Godfrey's going to be fit as well, doesn't it? Potentially he might be fit for the, the uh, Wolves game. Would you say, Brantway, God, Godfrey? <laughs> Godfrey. You want to see what's at the moment, though, is when you say, like, if, if Godfrey and Brantway was an option... And again, when I don't think any of us are just flippantly saying this twenty minutes after a five nil defeat. No, it's very it's very difficult to justify any one of those four lads, regardless of whether you solely think it's from tonight or not being involved in in that back four. And just just one thing on Branthwaite is that we've we've benefited this season from affording a young player the the chance to consistently make mistakes potentially, but to be involved week in, week out and just see if over a 10 or 20 game period, he can develop into someone who is important for us. And that's Anthony Gordon. And I think the thing with Branthwaite, we've all we've all just collectively done it there and that we're tracking back in our minds to try and think, oh, did Branthwaite do well there? Or yeah, he, he had a shocker up there. These performances are seven, eight games apart in totally different circumstances. And we're just parachuting this lad into a terrible back four and expecting him to somehow show us that he's capable of leading a Premier League defence. And I think it's it's totally unfair on him, isn't it? And until we are able to, you know, be it through injury or a sudden realisation that everyone else around him is terrible, and, and he does get that sustained period in the team, we're never really going to learn anything about him. And, and you could add so many other players, Les, couldn't you, to the back of that queue as people who just need that, give them that chance to disappoint us. And, and I'm sure they'll come through for us, but <laughs> it may be think, one of them will just surprise us all. Just the thing is, with the thing is with Brantley, he probably showed more character in that his first performance away at Wolves when he dropped yeah. an absolute clanger for their first goal, but then steadied himself and got on with the rest of the game fine than Michael Keane has in however many games this season. Mm. I mean, I, I, I don't I don't like to just constantly berate Michael Keane, but he's the senior defender at the club. He's the oldest centre-back we've got. And he sh- you know, he's the one with the England caps. He should be the one who is leading that defence, and he is totally incapable of doing it. As soon as he scored, I, I, I haven't seen the first two goals. Because I was on my way back from training and I went and bought a bottle of wine on the back of it because it got to 2 0 before it got home. It was like, I'm not watching this game completely. So that's the best performance I've heard of all night. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, as soon as he scored that own goal, you knew he was not going to get any better. It was, it was only going to go downhill. And Mason Holgate, you know, he's not the kind of character you need to back in that position either. So you, you kind of think, you know, if you're looking at what our options are, you might as well write Yerry Mina off because mm. I mean, he's in for one game, he's out for five. It's not even worth trying to bank on him. Although we are infinitely better at the back with him 
in the defence. We can't bank on him, so there's no point even thinking, well, if he gets back for these games, just, just write that off. Yeah. Might as well go with something different because this isn't working at all. And yeah. I can't see, no matter what permutation you play with these players at the back, especially away from home. I just can't, I can't see it working. And that's where all the problems stem from. It's, you know, we're not doing well up front either. You know, the fact that did we have a shot on target tonight? I don't think we did. We didn't against Southampton either. I mean, that is absolutely woeful. But mm. we, did, we did well against City. It, it's just, it, it's bizarre how you can play well against the good team like City and play terribly away to Southampton and Spurs. It just, I don't, I don't know what it is, but a lot of it stems from the back four because if, you know, if the players ahead of them are thinking we're going to concede at some point, it just, it just permeates through the team. And it, the key, in the, in the position we're in, the key is to just not concede. And you play horrible, horrible football, but you've just got to, like, not concede and take it from there and just grind it out and grind it out. And we're not capable of doing that with this defence. And, yeah, it, that, that's the most worrying thing for me. It's out in, uh, yeah. in years. Sorry, Dave. We, we've all no, no, no. We, we've all kind of accepted the fact that our senior centre half at the club is a confidence player, um, and it's just it, it's absolutely ludicrous to to even think about any of your defenders. I mean, if if Dominic Calvert Lewin or Anthony Gordon want to be confidence players, and we'll get seven or eight games in a row where they're electric and they score four or five goals. I'll accept a couple of really poor performances and not really being effective. The, the, the nature of Michael Keane's position is that we can't afford him that, that element of consistent mistake-making. It's, it's ludicrous that we're still talking about this, lad. And the, I think one of the most over, over-said phrases in football these days is probably men against boys when, when, when you get a drubbing like tonight. But... Yeah. I, I, I honestly couldn't have, have said it any better than that phrase tonight because it looked like children in amongst grown adults playing football. I mean, it, it was a bit earlier in the move, but for, for Harry Kane's first goal where Michael Keane just gets absolutely bullied by him in the middle of the park and kind of apologetically asks for the referee to, to show mercy on him and give a foul, it's pathetic. And, and the, the mentality of that lad is... He is the personification of this team, whereby, as you've both said, if something goes wrong, there is absolutely no resilience about them to, to mentally switch off, switch off from that moment and think, well, the next 70 minutes are what's important to me, not the last 70 seconds. And it, it doesn't take a great player to have that level of mental application. I'm, I'm thinking about Tottenham defenders tonight and... Do you know what? If Eric Dyer made an absolute shocker in the first couple of minutes, and and God forbid Everton got a shot on target on the back of it, it you, you can guarantee that he would wipe that very quickly out of his mind. Yeah. And the next time he touched the ball, he'd look relatively assured. And do you know what? It, it it might it might shake him for a couple of minutes, and Everton fans would get on his back. But I guarantee you, it would not affect his game. And Michael Keane looks like he's just lost all communication between his brain and his legs when something goes wrong. I mean, Jamie Carragher has no doubt while we've been talking, stripped his position in a part for, for his own goal. But the fact that he's running back to his own net square on and tries to swing a hopeless leg at that ball is, is just ridiculously bad from a technical point of view. And I, I know that we consistently target this lab, but... It, it it's it's really frustrating when that in particular when that was the first goal of the game and I, I'm not saying that Everton were, were were breaking down defensive barriers by any stretch of imagination in that first 15 minutes but I, I'm sick of having this consistent feeling of what if Michael Keane wasn't here um, and it, it's quite frankly a, a shame on Everton's recruitment and you know it's hard to blame the recruitment who brought him in because they left four or five Everton <laughs> yeah. years ago but. The, the fact that we've driven ourselves to this mess and, and, and are now ultimately taking our own medicine um, is, is coming at a very, very disturbing and dangerous time. Well, even, even at the start of the season, when we were conceding goals, it was his fault, wasn't it? I you think said, yeah. A lot of the goals we conceded early on in the season, even when we were winning games, it was down to him. And yeah, it, it, 
it's just horrible, isn't it? it you know, you, you don't want to single the fella out, but, you know, he is a 29-year-old um, England cap centre-back. He yeah. should be doing better. Um, and I, I, that was a great point for the third goal as well, the Harry Kane one. It's the fact that, I mean, it was definitely a foul on him. Harry Kane basically headlocked him on yeah, the yeah. play line. But his first thought isn't to be like, right, he's not getting away with this and just getting back, mm. getting in the way of him, chopping him down, doing whatever. That's not his first thought. His first thought is, I've been fouled there. And he looks at the referee. Then he's half a yard or t- probably three yards behind Harry Kane. He was not exactly a jet heeled striker, but he's never going to catch him up. And it, it, you know, it, it is that thing whereby if you know if a striker does that to you, you just go and get him back straight away. You, you don't you don't have that passiveness where you're like, hang on, ref, what's going on there? Just go and hit him. And yeah. he's he's just not got that in his game. And it's as you say, it's it's really quite frightening that he is the sort of senior centre half of the club, basically. And that's that that's how easily he falls apart in the in the face of adversity. Yeah. 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 Some excellent yeah. points there, lads, and, and, and you're absolutely right. It's like I, I, I look a little bit further than that, to be honest, and and, and look at who's who's going over to him and absolutely stripping him of it. Who's yeah. going over to him when that happens? Why are you crying to the, the referee? Michael, you know, we just conceded the goal and you're you're moaning about that. Go and, go and put him in the stands. Do, do, obviously not injure the lad, but you know what I mean? Go and physically perform against them. Um, the fact that nobody's going up to him, Seamus there, who's the captain, isn't he, I don't think he's ever been one. I know I know sometimes you see him being a bit angry and getting that bit of a mad look on his face at times and all that when he kicks off. But he's not gone over to him and screamed at him, has he? I didn't see him do any of that tonight, to be honest with you. Um, and yet we know all we, we, we all know full well who's gonna be the person that comes out with the, the war cry throughout the week. It's probably gonna be him, it's probably gonna be Michael Keane. Um, you know, you, you can you can we can all do the Everton bingo between now and, and when they come out and do the social media thing and say it's unacceptable and we will try hard and all that sort of thing. I feel like I sound like uh, Roy Keane in what he was saying about Man United after after uh, the, the derby against Man City yesterday, but um, it, it 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 does it, it does really get to you when you see that happen when they don't put in anything whatsoever that resembles a performance for the team and then repeatedly, repeatedly at various points throughout seasons gone by, will go on the club social media saying we must try harder, we must do this, we must do that. I've still remaining to see it. You know, we're all we're all remaining to see them do that consistently every single week. When's the last time you've watched an Everton defeat and not be able to blame the way in which they've performed and the way in which they've sort of stuck their heads up and, and properly, you know, tried to get into something? Because every time I've watched the defeat, the most of them, and I'm not thinking on the top of my head here, but most of them haven't looked like a real Everton performance has been unlucky. When's the last time you can say Everton were unlucky? Apart from apart from I know the obvious one, Man City, that was a good one. Away from home, when's the last time you've looked at Everton away from home thinking, do you know what? We probably deserved a point there. We probably deserved to, to win that game. They've been really lucky. That wasn't a penalty. All that sort of thing. I can't think of many of them, yet they're still happy to go back into the club, do the training, the nice little cosy you know, bubble a, a, a Finch farm and then say, oh, we'll, we'll try harder, we'll try harder. Still yet to see it, lads. I've seen you do it maybe once or twice, going back to that consistency point you, you both made, yet it never seems to happen. Um, mm-hmm. And this time, it looks like, and it, it, I'm really sort of sad to say it, but if they do that again, away from home, um. I, I, I don't think we have enough to stay up um, if we are relied upon winning away from home or getting a point or points um, away from home um, because, you know, it, all, it, all it takes is a good team. to. I mean, Man United, we've got to play at home and we've got to play Chelsea at home. Um, relying on the home form, which is generally what sides who are struggling rely on, I'm not too sure... Everton are capable enough to do that and that's what frightens me more than anything else yeah I, th- I think well we'll know exactly where we are 
by March 17th. Yeah. So w- whatever happens in these next two home games, that defines our season. If we get six points, we might be okay. Any less, and we're probably screwed. Which is four is not enough. Four, four is not enough for me. No, that's what I mean. Any any less than six points, and we're probably a bit fucked. It, it yeah. come down to that Brentford game, the second to last game. God forbid it comes down to that Arsenal game at the last game of the season, or the derby at Anfield. Even hmm. the, the the possibilities here are absolutely horrific. But our season is defined in the next two league games at home. And also the cup game of Palace away because I don't want to. I don't want to sort of just write that off as it's just a, a dispensable game because I think you know what, just try and win every game. No, just don't don't like write the cup off as like it's a nice to have. Just go for it. Just put put your best team out and say just go out and perform because that is a very winnable quarter final fixture. Mm. You know you yeah. get you know anything can happen, but that's that's in April. And then that just carries you through that that little period through to the semi-finals in April. Um, yeah, I, I, our season's going to be defined in the next week, basically, which is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, yeah. You know, to roll out the cliches, we kind of got to do our part and turn up as well. Yeah, we have seen it. It it does it does make a difference, and I I, I hate the whole cliche thing about like getting good to some park rocking and all that, but we've just got to try it because yeah. less than six points in these next two home games, it's not looking good. I don't, no. I don't think there's a chance we win We win two home games in a row. Uh, well, that's I'm, it, isn't it? We've got I'm, no I'm, consistency to win two games on the bounce. I, I, I'm not putting any hope on. I'm not even mentally thinking of getting six points from the next two home games because that is not going to happen. Um, but we, we are quite frankly going to have to go to either Burnley or Watford and win. And we're going to have to beat Brentford at home. I think if we can beat Brentford, beat Newcastle, go away and beat Burnley, this league is fortunately that bad this year. You guys have said, you know, Everton's fate rests in Everton's home form. For mm-hmm. me, Everton's fate rests in Burnley, Watford and Norwich's overall form because that that is... Everton will win a couple of games in between now and the end of the season, but the the only resonating question in my mind at the moment is, does 33 points keep you up or are you going to need 37? And and Everton might just get lucky this season in the the bottom three are that bad that they all go down in the low 30s or high 20s, some of them. And that is ultimately all that we've really got to cling on to. There's absolutely no justification now and I know that we sing dead loud at Goodison and there's banners everywhere, but th- there's no way that we beat these, ne- these next two teams and, God forbid, go down to Crystal Palace and, and do something. And I get what you're saying, Les, in that, you know, none of us want to get to this stage of a cup competition after crying out for 30 years that we wouldn't mind relegation as long as we actually won something. <laughs> o- only then to throw it away because we're, we're too busy focusing on you know, keeping Wofford below us. It's 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 a miserable time to be trying to engage with this, but I, I just I can't sit here now and and picture myself ever being happy with this club again. But in in, in <laughs> terms of, I, I, I can't picture us doing post match after Crystal Palace thinking, wasn't that a belter of a ten days? I, I just yeah. don't think in terms of mental character and and strength, we haven't got that. Uh, and and just to go back to to something that you guys said about um, Dave, I think you were saying about you know having that that one player who it you know, it, it doesn't always have to be giving another player down the banks or going at it with aggression, but we, we've probably only for my money got one player who was capable of as you say when a player makes a mistake or or makes a poor decision, be it aggressively or not, just letting him know, letting him know that that is not the standard, that's not yeah. good. Enough. This is how we do it. And desperately, it's Ben Godfrey. He, he's probably the only one I look at and think, you've got the character and the strength about you to, you know, be it in a bad team like he currently is or in a successful team, which I'm sure he will be one day. He, he's probably the only one I think, you're the man of this team. You, you are the only thing we've got close to a leader. And, you know, 
we're not going to go down the, the leadership debate with Seamus Coleman and Phil Jagielka and Richard Goff or any other failing Everton captain you want to throw into it. But he is probably the one person who I, I look at and think, I have hope in someone knowing what the standard of, of Everton should be. Uh, and for that reason, whether he's 60% or 100% fit, we need to get that lad back into that back mm. or as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave it there, lads. Um, for anyone who's uh, started listening to this on the way back from from London, um, an, an amazing effort to actually go there, watch that, stay, stand through the whole 90 of it. And then and then start coming home. It looks when they when they turn to it on the TV to the uh, away end. It looks like people have well started the journey out. So there might be a few of them possibly about, about an hour away from getting home. But uh, we us three hope this has been a bit more sort of therapeutic than um, and you might yeah any you'll probably heard from players and all the usual stuff that comes out after games. Um, bottom line is we are in deep deep trouble. Two home games to come. Got to go and get six points for playing. And the other mention as well, just before we finish, it uh, was Newcastle is absolutely no gimme whatsoever. That have they actually turned to a good side that has catapulted themselves out of danger? I don't think they're in any sort of danger of going down at all now. Everton have got to beat them at home. The the they did just completely blow us away when we went to their ground in Newcastle a few weeks ago. Um, big big trouble and. Um, yeah, let's just hope and pray we're going to have enough to stay in this in this division and then we can possibly enjoy a day out at Wembley. Who knows? Um, thanks so much for listening. As usual, we'll have all of the usual stuff we have on the Blue Room heading into the game next week against Wolves and then uh, Newcastle, although that might get mixed about a bit given the FA Cup game the week after. Um, and thanks to everyone as well for getting involved in our 10-year uh, anniversary stuff that we've been putting out or loads of different bits of content we're putting out as well which is a hell of a lot happier than watching the Blues right now unfortunately so yeah thanks very much for listening we'll speak to you soon